So first, I'm going to read the scripture this morning again before I do that because I know the word of God is powerful and you must hear that even if you don't hear anything I said. It's important. So we're going to go. This is from the New International Reader's Version. And we're doing this as Matthew 5, 38 through 48. You have heard that it was said, an eye must be put out for an eye. A tooth must be knocked out for a tooth. But here's what I tell you. Do not fight with an evil person. Suppose someone hits you on your right cheek. Turn your other cheek to him also. Suppose someone takes your, you to court to get your shirt. Let him have your coat also. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with him. Give to the one who asks you for something. Don't turn away from the one who wants to borrow something from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But here's what I tell you, love your enemies, pray for those who hurt you. Then you will be sons of your Father who is in heaven. He causes the sun to shine on evil people and good people. He sends rain on those who do right and those who don't. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Even the tax collectors do that. If you greet only your own people, what more are you doing than others? Even people who are ungodly do that. So be perfect, just as your Father in Heaven is perfect. So be perfect, just as your Father in Heaven is perfect. Wow, that's a high calling, to be perfect. You might say, how can God call someone to be perfect? I mean, he knows I'm going to undoubtedly mess up. I mean, the reason Jesus came to earth and died for our sins is because he was the only one who lived a perfect and sinless life. And you would be right by saying that. Jesus did live a sinless life. He was the perfect lamb who sacrificed for the sin of the world. But that kind of perfection isn't exactly what Jesus was talking about here. He was contrasting Christians with those who just followed the law. Throughout the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus had, be, had been beginning his teachings with, you have heard it said, and then he reminds what the law taught on these issues, and then he teaches us a little differently. He could have been softer here and just said, be merciful, just as your Father in Heaven is merciful. But no, he was perfect. Matthew here wants to tell us something different by conveying these words of Jesus, these words of being perfect. Before we get too far in this teaching of radical love, let's review, shall we? When Jesus was about to ascend to leave earth for heaven, he told his disciples to go, to make disciples, to teach everything he had taught them. This was the Great Commission. And we see that everything Jesus did on earth was to teach his disciples how they should live in the here and now, and how they could live forever in heaven with him. In light of this, we've been asking the last few months, what did Jesus teach? So far, we've seen what he taught on baptism, on temptation, on choosing disciples, on the second birth, on demons, on the kingdom bound, on proper attitudes, on murder, on marriage, and on oaths. These are all online for your viewing and reviewing pleasure. Today, Jesus gives some more insight into God's upside down, backwards kingdom. He takes the teachings of the law and turns them on their heads. At a surface level, the teachings of Jesus seem to contradict what the crowds knew to be true. But when we look deeper at what Jesus said, he wasn't throwing out the old. He was merely expanding upon it. Jesus says later in the Gospels that he did not come to abolish the law, but he came to fulfill it. And if you could sum up how to fulfill the law in one word, it would be love. The Jewish people were taught in the law that the punishment for a crime should be equal to the crime committed. And if someone hit you, this was a serious offense that demanded swift justice. But Jesus said, instead of a just punishment, we should offer mercy, even to our own detriment. And we should let it go, because 
With God, no insult shall stand. The law also said to not let someone steal from you. But Jesus said, if they want to take what's not theirs, let them have it. Then you are freely giving it as a gift. This is a way to show love and mercy. The law also said to protect yourself from a borrower. Make sure everything remains fair in a transaction. But Jesus said to be a generous giver and show love to the borrower. Jesus calls his followers to a higher form of love. It is not like the rest of the world or even other religions. Jesus takes the love of God a step further. Instead of repaying for evil, evil for evil, instead of repaying an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, he decides, he tells his followers to show love to those who've done you wrong, even if they don't deserve it. Here's another radical teaching Jesus said. Love your neighbor. Hate your enemy. Okay, that one's not backwards or upside down. Love those around me who are like me and not the ones who have hurt me in any way. I can do that. But wait, wait. That's the old teaching. What did Jesus say again? He said, love your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you. Ah, <sighs> that's much more difficult. Back in Bible times, the patriarch Joseph demonstrated that kind of radical love. He was hated by his brothers. He endured all kinds of trouble. But through it all, he stayed faithful to God. And unless we think this only happens in Bible times, I found an example of a modern person who loved his enemies. His name was Nelson Mandela. And he was a person who spent most of his life in a South African prison under the racism of apartheid, but in one of the most amazing transformations in history, he was not only set free, but became the president of South Africa. These heads of state from everywhere were coming to his inauguration. They were all vying to have the best seat, the seat of honor. And who did he offer those seats to? But his prison guards. That's demonstrating loving his enemies. Negative circumstances, they happen to everyone. It's easy to hate your enemy. For some people, it may be even easier than others. But any form of hate, it's not for a Christ follower. The secret to not letting hate in your heart is to give it to God. And love is God love. For hate and love cannot coexist. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice. And as an atoning sacrifice, as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. As you might remember, that was a song from our Christmas program last year. And it's also a verse from the Bible. So how can we love like God loved? How can we be perfect like God is perfect? The Amplified Bible defines this perfection as growing into complete maturity of godliness in mind and character having reached proper height of virtue and integrity. And perfection, it's found in love. As Christians become more mature in Christ, we become like Him and can love like Him. The Apostle John talks about love in his gospel and his letters. If you could summarize all John's writings into one word, it would be love. And he writes Jesus' words in John 13, 35. If you love one another, then everyone will know you are my disciples. Love is what God did for us, so we do to others. And in a way most people would not do. Through love, we fulfill the great commandment to go and make disciples. If you're not yet a Jesus follower and you'd like to be, you just need to put your faith in Jesus by accepting you've done wrong, and then you stop doing that wrong, believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and then confess your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you can join God's people on the quest to being perfect and radically loved.